I understand that we may have our physicians on the line now. We have Dr. Reyes and uh, Dr. Jack Burt on the phone. Uh, so, uh, of course, you guys recognize my voice. Hello, Dr. Reyes and Dr. Burt. Hello, how are you, Carl? Good morning. Dr. Reyes, why don't we start with you? And uh, uh, we do have your picture up. On, so, good morning. How are you? Good morning, fine. Thank you, Carl. First, I would like to congratulate you for your vision and commitment to address some of the critical health care needs of retired NFL players. And I'm extremely honored to be a member of your board of directors and medical team that will be charged uh, to develop a more comprehensive way of assessing, diagnosing, and treating not just the players' medical issues, but also their psychological, social, and emotional status. If we truly really care, I believe, about our players, we should use the same approach and standardize store evaluation to be applied to players even before they enter the NFL and while they are actively playing for the league. And uh, you know, many of our players who enter the league are high school and college graduates in their teens and 20s were generally healthy, confident, many times overconfident. And yes, they deserve lucrative contracts that could make them instant celebrities. But we must help these young athletes learn how to cope with the recently acquired fame and wealth by offering them both medical and psychological assistance. And another thing that I'd like to share with you guys is that it is very important to start looking at the short and long-term effects of injuries. In particular, trauma involving the brain and the spinal cord. Recent studies are now telling us that even mild trauma in various degrees of concussion and spinal cord damage could be associated with degeneration of brain cells months or years after the injury when you retire, and these could result in memory loss, impaired judgment, inability to carry out simple activities of daily living, depression, suicide, agitation, and violent behavior. And more recently, Lou Gehrig disease, which is a form of nerve and muscle degeneration, has been reported in retired athletes. So um, periodically we hear and read about star athletes we have adored and admired, like many of you, who have suffered from these conditions, yet there's been no cohesive movement to enable them. Yes. So I believe it is timely that we support in every way we can a dedicated and player-centered organization such as the RPA, which will focus on the players' health care concerns that will include prevention, early diagnosis, research, and new effective and safe treatment of sports-related injuries. So I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Well, well, thank you, Dr. Reyes, and we will sure uh, uh, put this in a, in a form where we can amplify it and also print it and pass it out. We, we, we are really fortunate to have some of our players here today that know and understand exactly what you're talking about. Along with Dave Robinson and Marv Fleming, we have uh, Jim Taylor, Hall of Famer Jim Taylor, and also Hall of Famer uh, Mel Renfro. We will get to them uh, later, and we will get a special comment uh, from them. But uh, right now, maybe if uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jack Burt can come on and, and answer and maybe say a few words, and before I uh, introduce him, he is a uh, former head of Arthroscopic Association of I have to look here. <laughs> North America, yeah, okay. But uh, what I do know what this group does, 
and, and, and how important they are. There are about 3,000 uh, orthopedic surgeons uh, around the country, and, uh, and he is a very avid uh, spokesman and is willing to come out and talk to players and groups, and, uh, and he's volunteered to do that. And I just want to thank uh, him as well as Dr. Reyes for joining us today. Dr. Bart, are you there? I am, sir. Thank you very much. And Dr. Reyes was very uh, eloquent in his introduction. I, I disagree with him on one, one thing, though, Carl. I don't think either one of us can help you psychologically, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I forgot to leave out the part that he's a comedian, too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the purpose of, of me getting involved is that I do represent approximately 3,100 uh, orthopedic surgeons uh, throughout the United States. Uh, we are subspecialists in arthroscopy. Uh, most of us do total joint replacement uh, of the knee as well and some of the hip. And as, as I watch people like Carl Walk and, and other NFL athletes, as they age, there's clearly a need for our input into how to care for them. And so um, I, uh, I'm going to be very brief and just say that we are uh, definitely uh, aware of the issues that are affecting retired NFL athletes. I just got back from New Orleans at a board of directors meeting for our organization, and we're excited about the uh, opportunity to work with the retired NFL players. We are, are willing to see uh, you folks uh, gratis and to care for you and to help you in any way we can from conservative care to surgical care. Um, uh, we are uh, willing and able, and we represent every state in the country, uh, and there's tremendous expertise within our organization. So I would echo Dr. Ray's comments that uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a member of this organization, and, and I will help in any way I can, and, and hopefully will represent those physicians in the country who are more than willing to get involved with uh, care and treatment of retired NFL athletes. Thank you, Carl. Well, well, thank you, and thank you again, Dr. Reyes. Y you know, the, the important thing here is, is that, you know, he said that they would probably provide some of these services gratis. We, we have not really asked for that, and this is where the Retired Players Association really comes in. But what you can see and what you can hear in the doctors' voices is that they, when I talk to these guys, they go, well, you guys don't have this kind of care, you don't have this kind of plan. They are so willing to help, and they are really disappointed that this kind of care has not been provided in, in the past. And so they have been so – because they love the game of football, they love the sport of football, and they think that it was very easy to talk to these guys into joining us. So, again, my hats are off to the doctors. I think I've been very fortunate to, to uh, get to a really a good team, and this is just part of our team. And, 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 and I think this is just kind of an indication of things to come. Uh, I, I think we've had a great time here this morning. I feel like, um, you know, I've had a chance to say uh, what I wanted to say. I appreciate the guys coming out. You know, Mel Renfro, Jim Taylor, Marv Fleming, Fleming, Dave Robinson. There were other guys that just couldn't get here this morning because of the snow. We were lucky to make it ourselves. Guys like Krause, Paul Krause, Dave Wilcox, uh, you know, Charlie Taylor. Oh, man, so many guys are so excited about this <coughs> because they themselves have this kind of need. They talk about the care they're going through, they were seeing doctors. So uh, I am just proud to be part of that. And again, uh, it's, just, it's just something I've had a privilege to, to be part of. It's something I want to do. I'm I, you know, I, I, I work, I spend all kinds of time with this, and it's only because I think it's right and I think it's, it's only fair for the players. And so uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. We will have some interviews from the other players later as we go along. And uh, uh, this is what I think the future of the NFL sh should be about. And uh, thank you again for, for being here today. Thank you.